friend. Um, yeah, so maybe we can start with you, Professor Tuit. Would you like to introduce yourself and briefly say something about your context, um, the University of Denver in the United States, and also uh, your role within that institution? Good afternoon, good evening. I'm not sure if we have anybody in the morning context, but if we do, good morning to you as well. Uh, Frank Tuit, University of Denver. I am currently the senior advisor to the Chancellor and Provost on Diversity and Inclusion and Professor of Higher Education. I have been in the role of the Senior Diversity Officer at my institution for about seven years now, and I am uh, looking forward to a, a much needed and, and much earned uh, sabbatical that's coming up at the end of this academic year. So, um, I will jump right into the presentation, but I need someone to release the screen so that I can share. There we go. Thank you. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna jump right in for the sake of time. Uh, my role here today is talk, to talk about the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, what we call ODI, Faculty Fellows Program. Uh, I will say, as you read in the case, the, the, uh, the goal behind this was to create an opportunity for us to have unit level focus on diversity and inclusion efforts uh, across the institution. We are a, a centrally organized institution, about 12,000 students with uh, 11 different academic programs, uh, divided in half in terms of our graduate and undergraduate programs. And with 11 different academic programs, we have, uh, as you might imagine, 11, 11 different cultures on campus. Each unit has its, its own set of unique uh, cultures and experiences and ways of doing business. And uh, historically, we have been a, a sort of top-down institution with with central efforts trying to drive change at the ground level. And we learned through some research that that was not succeeding in the ways in which we had hoped. And so this program emerged specifically to expand leadership opportunities that would enable folks to emphasize diversity and inclusion. And we wanted to do this by working with administrators in support of our efforts to diversify faculty, to provide faculty with the skills to create uh, inclusive classroom environments, to continue to, to um, diversify our student base um, by creating access and opportunity for underrepresented students. And we were driving most of this by university-wide strategic planning effort. And so our ODI fellows work with recruitment-related uh, aspects. They work on faculty diversity, they work um, really to, to make sure that things are happening on the ground as it relates to being champions of diversity and inclusion. Uh, as we mentioned in the case, um, I just wanted to cover some of the highlights. One, we were really committed to designing a an opportunity to build capacity at the unit level by identifying and empowering specific champions to lead inclusive education goals we wanted to align unit level inclusive education efforts with strategic or university-wide strategic priorities, resource and expertise, while still allowing for flexibility uh, uh, to address specific needs at the unit level. And we also uh, wanted to create opportunities for folks to, to share best practices uh, across units. And finally, the, the group of faculty fellows provided us an opportunity to have access to stakeholders who would be able to provide feedback on initiatives that we were proposing from the central administration with the hope that we would maximize impact on the ground. Behind all of our efforts to advance inclusive education at the University of Denver is the concept of, of inclusive excellence, which we use as our sort of driving, um, our driving framework for addressing issues. issues. Uh, simply put, inclusive excellence is the merging of inclusion with excellence, recognizing that you can't be inclusive without striving for excellence, and you can't be excellent without striving for inclusion. So the Association of American Colleges and University put forward this framework, 
And we've been using this framework since 2007 at our institution to drive diversity and equity, uh, diversity and inclusion goals. Uh, as you see here, the, the definition that we've adopted for our institutional context is inclusive excellence is the recognition that an educational institution's success and vitality is dependent on how well it values, engages, and includes the rich diversity of students, staff, faculty, administrators, and alumni. We like to think of this as anywhere you have real live breathing people who are connected to the institution, inst inclusive excellence should be an area of consideration. Uh, more than a short-term project or a single office initiative, this comprehensive approach requires a fundamental transformation of the institution by embedding and practicing inclusive excellence in every effort, aspect, and level of the organization. The goal at the University of Denver is to make inclusive excellence a habit that is implemented and practiced consistently throughout the institution. I want to just circle back to two things. One, the notion of a short-term project and or a single office initiative. Uh, we take the view that inclusive excellence is everyone's work and that it requires all hands in deck in order on deck in order for us to have uh, an opportunity to really move the needle. And then the, the other aspect of it is how do we move it from uh, something that we do occasionally to something that becomes normalized and practice as a daily part of, uh, of institutional operations. So those are just a couple of, of goals and, and ideas around how we think about inclusive excellence. Again, it's the effort to make excellence inclusive and to make inclusion excellent. So one of the things we've come to appreciate is that the modern university cannot be radically changed by simply adding more diversity, creating safer campus spaces, addressing the cultural diversity, uh, cultural competency of our faculty, staff, and redesigning the curriculum to include a stronger focus on diversity, uh, privilege, and oppression. Uh, though we do recognize these as great places to start, We've learned from our experience, if we do not link these initiatives to the structures and systems that drive university life, they will not become embedded in the fabric of our institutions. And so the ODI Faculty Fellows Program became one of, of several ways in which we tried to structurally make connections between our aspirations, our values, and our commitments, and ways that we would link them to have an opportunity to be operationalized and embedded. And so uh, I don't want to duplicate what's in the case, but you, uh, you've been able to see that there are things that our, our ODI faculty fellows are doing that are unit specific on the ground and tailored for their specific context. Um, we've learned a couple of things from the implementation of that program. And I want to talk a little bit about some of those things as we go through them. First is that uh, we have absolutely been able to have a transformative impact on curriculum and pedagogy. Um, uh, to date, we have put through close to 500 faculty members through train a variety of trainings on inclusive pedagogy, uh, both uh, at the unit level. So individual academic units are hosting uh, professional development opportunities for faculty to go through. Uh, training and related to creating inclusive learning environments where inclusive pedagogy and I know Dr. Stewart will talk a little bit about this but where inclusive pedagogy is is becoming uh, a common feature in the way we deliver education at the University of Denver so uh, to our surprise um, faculty have really bought into and embraced the notion that um, many of them were not trained to learn how to teach and as such need to engage in, in uh, professional development opportunities that will strengthen their opportunity to create inclusive learning environments. On the second was even though we um, added this structure, and in the case we talk about some of the resources that they get, they still didn't find themselves as having enough of an infrastructure at the unit level to accomplish the goals that they had set out. And so, not surprisingly, we replicated a model where you have a couple of people centrally, and at the unit level, we replicated the model by saying, okay, now there's one person at the unit level, 
who's responsible for moving diversity and inclusion uh, at the academic unit level. And some of them really um, spoke to being, uh, you know, overtasked, overburdened by that. And so moving forward, we're, we're going to need to to strengthen infrastructure and think about ways in which we can provide more resources to them at the unit level. Uh, the other thing is uh, we've had a really tough year at the University of Denver, and in part because of the external environment. Uh, if you've been following uh, the news here, we we've had. Uh, a range of things from different policies being implemented uh, related to immigration status, related to undocumented uh, individual status. Those, those policy changes have created um, a sense of urgency, uh, impacted the way we think about our day-to-day -day work at the institution. And our ODI faculty fellows are experiencing that at the ground, on the ground level as well. So that's been a surprise. The second is we've also seen an increase in the number of incidents um, that uh, arguably, not arguably, have had sort of hate and, and, and discrimination. And, and so the fellows uh, found, because they've been identified as unit level champions, find themselves now in a position of having to respond to those um, uh, incidents and issues as they arise. And that's moved them away from being able to be as proactive and more reactive. So this is something that we didn't uh, anticipate. So it brings me to the next point that we need to uh, have ongoing training and support and to make sure that there are opportunities for our ODI faculty fellows to meet and support each other uh, on a consistent basis. Uh, not that we intentionally just said go forth and do great work and come back and let us know how it goes. It's just when you get into it, people have been running and engaged in work and, and finding time to stop, finding times to continue to develop their skills, finding time for support from each other uh, hasn't been as uh, available as they would like. Next, um, one of the things that we've also come to learn is even though we've put these positions in place uh, and they have to a certain extent increased collaboration, coordination, and communication with us, there's also a need to make sure that whoever the unit head is, the unit leader, is constantly engaged with that, those individuals on the ground so that we're not creating folks who are going off and doing their own thing and that their uh, efforts align with not only what the Office of Diversity and Inclusion has as priorities, not only what the university has a, as priorities, but also priorities at the unit level. So those are the, the sort of last sets of, 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 of things. I would just add that I think overall, we are extremely happy with the program. It has had a strong, significant impact on the way in which our, 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 our efforts at the unit level are aligning with what we're trying to do centrally. We are concerned about burnout because we've put a lot on the folks that uh, uh, set up to or stepped up to take on these roles. Uh, we do recognize that we need to continue to find additional ways to support them. Our faculty who, who agreed to serve in these roles are not doing this full time. They're still teaching. In some cases, we have one who's also still a department chair, so has, has very um, um, significant duties. And making uh, uh, excellence inclusive at the unit level is something that requires significant attention. So I'll stop there as we get to uh, take some questions, but I did want to leave you with this question, clearly this is something that we've created for the University of Denver. There are other models uh, throughout the, the higher, other higher ed institutions uh, in the US that, that have similar sort of structure. Um, many of these create fully funded positions like associate deans and, 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 and full-time positions that are um, dedicated to doing this work at the unit level. Obviously, resources is an important factor. We were able to support this with a, with a gift from, from the institution, an internal grant, and that's allowed us to do this. But it does raise the question on uh, something we'd like to hear a little bit more about, uh, what are opportunities 
or challenges for replicating such uh, a model at your institution. Thank you so much for this, Frank. A wonderful presentation. Um, and it's a great insight to um, this model, how inclusive education can actually also be considered and implemented in, in a policy framework. Um, 